we still have to wait to see how he responds. I think we have to just be cautious with him. Um, but it's good to see him out there um, doing a little extra shooting, moving a little better, uh, getting involved a little bit more in practice each day. Um, so we'll, we'll wait to see how he looks and, and, and go forth. But uh, there is no real aggressive timeline with that. Um, when, when we deem he's ready, I think it's uh, it'll be safe to say uh, to put him out there, but I don't want to rush it. I certainly don't want to have any setbacks. Any more clarity on his status for tomorrow? Uh, I'd still list him as day-to-day, um, and, and hopefully we'll get a good, good response, and he's moving in the favorable direction. I don't want to paint myself into a corner and say, no, he's not going to play with the hope he could, but uh, we'll just wait and see. Just to clarify, doing more today, does that mean three on three, or is he not? Well, we didn't do a ton of competitive stuff today after last night, but he was involved more in, in practice. If he's out there at the four, that Kyle would move down to the, to the three. Uh, how, would, how would Kyle's responsibilities generally change? I wouldn't think they would change much. Um, you know, I think he, he's a versatile defender. So, you know, guarding one, twos, threes, fours, he's done that all year. We've been switching quite a bit with those, uh, you know, mid-sized guys, him, Denny, Rui. Um, so defensively, it doesn't really change much. Um, now, offensively, it puts him in a slightly different position, but it's not dramatically different than what he's been doing. Uh, we've used him in a lot of different spots, him at the five, him at the four. Um, so I think he'll be comfortable if and when that happens. Um, and I think him at the four with KVP at five, you know, is, is probable as well. So it doesn't change much uh, for him in that regard. But I think his versatility, his flexibility with his skill set allows him to, you know, move from position to position seamlessly. Uh, you coached Flash and you coached Jay Ish on prior occasions too. So uh, how ha- what impact has he made since he returned here? Well, I think he's got a connection, uh, you know, not only to the organization, but to a number of guys in the locker room uh, on a personal level. He's played with those guys. And they, they know uh, he's going to play with pace. He's going to push the ball, he, uh, the early attack and probe. Uh, he's going to generate some easy offense for him. Uh, he's a pest on defense, you know. I think they know that. But uh, uh, just his energy, his, you know, his positivity in the locker room, he's upbeat. He's a, he's a galvanizing force in that regard, which I think is a, is a great sign uh, for this group. You mentioned testiness. Uh, how does that manifest itself? In what ways is he – what areas is he affected? Well, he's just he's, – he's, he's kind of a – a gnat <laughs> where you just, you know, you, you can't shake him. He's always in the, in the right spot. He's uh, very handsy. Uh, he's got the quickness to stay in front of guys. And a lot of times because of his stature, uh, teams think that they can go at him. Um, but that he's, he's played against that his whole life. Um, so he, he's accustomed to teams want to go under and di- disregard him as a shooter. He's played against that. So I, I think he has a good feel um, for not only his own game, but how his game suits uh, how we want to play, um, and defensively, he's, he gives effort. Um, you know, he, he's going to be relentless pursuing the ball and, and being a pest. I think that just changes the complexion of that group. Chris Epps said that um, once he suffered the injury in Dallas, they did uh, testing. I don't know what it, whether it's MRI or X-ray, but they kind of determined that it wasn't all that serious. Have you guys done your own round of imaging or testing to get your own read on it? Yeah, and you know, I think it's. With the bone bruise, it's one of those things where, and I asked this question specifically, well, how long is it? And it, it ranges depending on the severity. It could be weeks. It could be a couple of months. There's just no way to tell, um, you know, beyond the pain threshold. There's certain movements that are, you know, uh, affect him different than others. And we just want to make sure that he's in a good place physically before you throw him out there in five-on-five five situations. Uh, um, yeah, uh, maybe a bit of a softball question. Um, but just want to ask about cross matching. You mentioned it yesterday, and you just mentioned a little bit of it right now. But you've had Rui really play five on defense, four on offense at times. What are the benefits of cross matching? Well, I think you, you got to look at it from you know different sides. Where defensively, his physicality, his his size, um, you can match with you know certain bigs. You're not worried about you know uh, mismatching the post. They want to play through a big in the post. You feel pretty confident he can guard one on one. Um, you know, at times we've downsized and he's playing the four and you continue, you can continue to switch, um, you know, one through four and he's able to keep those smalls in front. So I think it gives you 
once again, the flexibility to, you know, pick and choose, you know, how you want to match and take away a strength maybe of your opponent. You know, the team is a very dynamic pick and roll team. Put size on the ball, put size obviously on the screener and you switch. So it kind of negates the advantage of a roller um, and them spacing the floor and putting pressure on the rim. You having to tag and close out, which opens up threes. It opens up driving lanes. So you kind of negate all that by keeping bodies in front of bodies. Um, you know, on offense, it, you know, he's, he's been pretty consistently at the four. So, you know, whereas he understands both now where he can say, all right, well, defensively, I understand my coverage and offensively, I know my spots at the four. So it helps, you know, I think his, his focus, there's less indecision about where he needs to be. Um, and hopefully that helps his consistency on offense. On offense, is he strictly more playing four at times that he can play the five? Well, we saw that against Brooklyn, you know, and just because of the matchup he had. Um, you know, they, they wanted to guard him with Marcus Aldridge, so we kind of moved him to the five spot on offense, you know, kept it simple, kept him in pick and rolls, and it was effective. So there's, you know, there's once again an you know, opportunity to kind of twist it a little bit and target the matchup you like um, and keeping those guys, keeping those defenders in the action. How would you assess uh, your team's rebounding? Um, I, I think you guys you know, did great in the beginning, but maybe overall this season it's a little bit below average compared to the league. Yeah, I think, uh, I think we're 16th or 17th overall in rebound percentage. So it's, it's not awful. Um, you know, and that's one thing we, we keep in mind when we, when we downsize. You know, it's also an issue at times when you switch. Um, but you know, we, we spoke about it at length. It's not a, a one guy thing. It can't be. It's not always on your fives. It's, it's an overall mindset where, you know, you can test shots. You can't leak out. Um, you know, if, if there's a small down there and the, you, you switched and there's a size disadvantage, somebody else has to hunt and hit, get in the mix and, you know, get some of those loose balls, the tap outs, all those things are, you know, come into play. Um, but I think it's just an overall hit first mentality that we, we just have to have. We've had it at times. And I think it's easy when you play solid defense. Um, and that's the, just the last piece. You got to make sure you, you come up with a gang rebound. Before you get back on defense to correct it, characterize your philosophy as uh, you're not so concerned about your offensive rebounding percentage. In yeah. Other words, it's the defensive rebounding percentage. You're more. Then, yeah, the overall rebounding percentage and the defensive rebounding percentage. I mean, it's it's an area that I think we can get subtly better. Some 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 guys have a strength of knack for it, uh, have a nose for the ball, have the ability to, to uh, you know go get it physically. Um, but I would forego um, crashing the offensive glass. You know, I certainly don't want to do that at the expense of our transition defense. What is the goal you have with this strategy? If you know you. Get it, go get it, or... Yeah, I mean, it, we have some rules in place. I mean, they're, they're, they're pretty simple. You know, in, a, in a vacuum, you know, you want your smalls to get back on the raise of the shot. It doesn't always happen. The spacing can always change. Your, your, your bigs, you know, your fours and five have a license to go. But if they're outside the paint or, you know, above the three-point line, obviously you don't want to come careening in. That ball goes over your head. It's the first pass to a fast break. So just being mindful of, you know, where the shot – it's taken, um, you know, long shot, long rebound. So some guys have a, a better feel for it, but I think the, the priority is to get back and make sure we're, we're getting our defense set. I think when we do that, we have a best chance um, to, to minimize teams offensively. Given the, uh, the increase in three-point attempts, has the dynamics of rebounding and how you coach it changed? Which one of the things that has changed the most since you got into coaching? Um, I don't know if that's one of the, the things that's changed. The volume of threes, obviously. Um, the types of threes has changed dramatically. A lot of guys are shooting them off the bounce, um, which, you know, years ago was catch and shoot. Um, it may have been off pin downs, but, you know, the volume of, you know, pull-up threes. But that, that, that doesn't change anything defensively. I mean, from a rebounding perspective, it's just a mindset where a lot of long shots, there's going to be a lot of long rebounds. So, and I think our, you have to fight that temptation to ball watch. And it's not just unique to us or any other team. I've seen it year after year. Um, it's just bad habits where guys have been athletic enough to make plays. Um, they don't see the value in necessarily turning, finding a body and, and initiating contact to negate any offensive rebounds. And Coos said that uh, last night you guys kind of, I guess, had sort of a mock game, right, with the refs. Mm -hmm. Um, how was that structured? Was it like you coaching against uh, Pat Delaney or just 
I guess, how, how did you guys split up and have two teams? Well, we just mixed the teams. You know, it was good just to change it up. Um, we, we, the priority for us was just to blow it out a little bit, get our wind back, get up and down, be, be competitive, have good energy on the floor. It was less about, you know, schematics and more just getting up and down. Um, the officials I thought were great. Um, guys going to complain and that's what they do. So, um, had, had an assistant coach each team and, and just let them play. A lot of things. <laughs> uh, and I mean, you know, they, they're a very aggressive downhill team. Um, you know, they, they do a great job of, of that 0.5 mentality. You know, we've talked about it. They make quick decisions and move from one action to the next. So our ability to contain, keep guys in front, keep them out of the paint. Uh, they're not a volume three-point shooting team, but they're effective. Uh, so the paint has to be the priority. Um, and with that, the pick and roll. And then, you know, Murray and pick and roll is a problem. So we're going to have to mix up coverages, give them different uh, different levels, you know, to keep them off balance a bit. But keeping him under control, I think, uh, would really help us. All right, Coach, let's transition over to Zoom. We'll start with Peeney. Thank you. Hey, Coach. Uh, with the upcoming integration of uh, KP in the lineup, how would it influence Kuz, Denny, and Rui? Oh, I think it'd be a good influence. Um, you know, I think once again, it, the spatial dynamic that he brings, uh, his ability to pick and pop, um, it's going to st stretch the defense even more. Um, it's going to open up the floor for those driving lanes, more driving kicks, um, you know, allows our bigs, whether he's rolling um, at the five or whether he's at the four and he's spacing, you know, it's going to put a lot more pressure on weak side defenders, you know, to they have to do, do take account for the, for the role, but also know, We've got more shooting on the floor, so it's it's a two pronged attack. I think it's a great opportunity to uh, uh, you know play in space, but I think it does put a lot of pressure on the defense. Thank you. We'll go to Neil. Hey, Coach Kuz always says you know the right thing about okay about playing the right way basketball wise, not necessarily him forcing the issue, but. For him now as one of your you know top scoring options, do you ever have to encourage him to be more aggressive, or does he play that fine line well? No, he's always aggressive, which you know I don't mind. And you know the the only thing that I you know have to kind of make sure he understands is there's purpose with your aggression. Um, you know, at times it, it, he can get out of control and uh, turnovers, and it's not necessarily turnovers from a selfish standpoint. He's trying to make a play, but sometimes that lends to playing in a crowd. Um, or trying to do too much. So I, I, I think it's, it's, it's a good balance. Um, and for the most part, he's done a terrific job for us. But, you know, minimizing the unforced errors, and uh, that's going to be key for us as a group, you know, not just him, but uh, collectively valuing each possession, make sure we get a good, good look at it. Um, and that will help, hopefully, our floor balance and our and overall defense. And obviously a small sample size, but he's had the ball in his hands more often in the past few games. What have been some of your, you know, early thoughts on that? Well, we've seen it, I think, all year. And I know this is a small sample as of late, but we were, we've been short on bodies throughout this season. Um, you know, with guys being out or with the COVID, you know, epidemic we, we kind of went through. So we've seen it. And I think, you know, overall, he's done a really good job. Um, you know, I just think being mindful of time and score, you know, picking your spots, when to be aggressive. Um, you know, when to look, pick, uh, find your teammates, make plays for others. Um, but he's he's done a terrific job of rebounding the ball. And if you do that, we get stops, rebound, you get a license to run. I mean, the, the responsible part is being accountable. You know, when we do run and taking care of it, make sure we value it and, and make sure we get a great, great look at it. Thanks, Coach. And we'll finish up with Christos. Hey, Coach, hope you're doing well. Uh, the second half of the season starts tomorrow. How important for you is to start that uh, second half with a win over the Spurs tomorrow? Well, I think it'd be great. Obviously, we want to get off on the right foot. Um, but I think our guys understand the urgency in which we have to approach these last 24. Um, we talked about the compression of the season and, you know, these, these opponents, you know, with, you know, 24 games in 46 days, it's, uh, it's pretty stiff. Um, so it's not a, a lot of wiggle room to think we can just ease our way into it. We, we have to attack this with the right mindset. Um, but it's a challenge because they're a very well-coached team. They're disciplined. Um, 
they're very aggressive. Uh, so it, it's going to be a challenge for us tomorrow uh, to make sure we, we approach it and continue to move and share the ball the way we have, but also defensively uh, continue to see an uptick in that area. And also with uh, the trades, with the trades, with the moves that you made, what did you see in the last games and what do you expect to see in the second half with KP on the floor as well? Well, I'm excited to see it. I mean, obviously we haven't had a chance to see it in real time, but you know, once again, the spatial dynamic that he'll bring, the shooting. Um, you know, I think he's a better defender than he's given credit for. You know, shot blocking, rim protection. Um, you know, using him as a roller. Uh, he does a great job of finishing in the paint. So it's it's a multi prong. Whether he's catching in the paint and spraying the shooters, whether he's the benefactor of spacing the floor. Um, you know, posting him to play make, posting him to score. Um, so it gives us a lot a lot of flexibility with you know his skill set. Um, but overall, I think it's important that, uh, once again, he get healthy and we can get the best version of him. How was your all-star break? It, it, it was short. It was short. Um, good time to recharge, uh, have some fun. Uh, I came here early, two days, three days before uh, we start practicing just to get my sharpness back, get back in shape a little bit. Um, I take it really seriously. I'm excited for the second half of the season. And um, hopefully we can do great things and, and, and get where we belong. So. It was short, you say, but it was also uh, your first. It was short. It was short for me. Yeah. So, like, I don't know about the other, other guys. Like, they all, like, had their own plans. I just kept, kept it short. Um, what do you kind of see these last 24 games um, as? And kind of what are you? hopeful for and excited for it. I mean, everything is open. Those 24 games, we, we got um, we got a lot of back-to-backs coming, a lot of games coming in, uh, in, in a short period of time. I think we just need to be focused. I mean, we need uh, our, our last pieces to come along, KP, uh, to come back and, and participate with us. And um, I'm excited, man. This is going to be, it's, it's going to be tough. It's going to have a lot of competition, but I, th I think we're a great team. I think we're a good team. Danny, what, are you, what areas of progress are you happy with that you've made individually so far? Just being more aggressive. I mean, I started, like, I can look at the game in Brooklyn and say, like, I started 0 for, 0 for 5 and be like, I think, like, the old Danny would be like, all right, I'm not going to take as many shots. I'm not going to be as aggressive. And uh, I think it didn't get into my mind. I think... Uh, as a team, like, we felt good out there. I felt good. I felt confident. I felt that I need to be more aggressive and create for others. And, and that's exactly what I did. We played together. The ball was moving. And, uh, yeah, it's a big it's a big, um, big shout out to, to my teammates. And um, just keep, keep going. You think you're only 22 years old? 21. Oh, excuse me. You just turned 22. Yes. I apologize. You're good. Um, it's funny to hear yourself say the old Denny. <laughs> um kind of but um uh, i'm saying the old any because like i grow every day i mean i learn something new every day i mean in practice um i'm learning every day and then and, and, and i and i see myself better and better so me saying the old any it's like i feel good saying that because i know how much i progressed and how much uh, i came along so it feels good how important learning your shooting spots on the floor how important is that to you? <laughs> i'm still figuring it out um it's important you know you know you like I, th I think when you um you mature and like you have more time in the league i think you know your spots you know like where you want to go or what what areas like you're better shooting from but like uh it just come naturally i don't really think about it. like i'm 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 hopefully like I want to take like good shots. Like, if I feel like it's a good shot, no matter where it's from, like I'm, I'm gonna shoot it without even like overthinking it. But if like the ball is in your hands, you're dribbling now, you know you want, you need to, to hit that game winner, or hit that big shot. Yeah, you know you need to know your spots. So uh, I mean, this is just more experience than anything. So I understand there's some players in the league that mm -hmm. know their spots so well that like they don't even have to see the basket. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Have you experienced that? 
Um, yeah, oh, definitely. Kyle said that like Mark Rosen. Yeah, it's that's the first name it got into my mind. I want to, I was about to say that. Uh, Demar is really good at it, but um, there's a lot of good, uh, good players that like I think that the elite, elite players know their spots. Uh, not even their spots, like their signature move. You know, like they, they know what they want to get to. Everybody know what they're gonna get, like what they're gonna try to do, and you still can't stop it. So. What do you think about the chemistry that's developing between you and Kyle and Rui? I mean, that how easy that they're out there at the same time. Uh, I think it's great. I think one game when we first did it, we were like, damn, like we can switch, like all of us. It's it's, it's a crazy advantage. Like me having me, Rui, and Kuz on the floor together, it's a crazy advantage. Like everybody got their own skill set, their own things that they're good at. Um, we all complete each other, and I feel like um, it's a big asset for the team. And I mean, hopefully we can play together more and get do some more some better stuff. In practice, they, um, at the end of practice, you and uh, Coach Delaney, you were doing like soccer juggling. Yeah. Like, <laughs> uh, like, what's your record? How many can you do? And like, how much soccer did you play? And how has that foot felt to you? So that's a great question. Nobody ever asked me that. Um, I started as a soccer player. I mean, people underestimate like because I'm tall now, but I, I, I was good growing up and like I tried different sports like everybody. And um, I was really fast when I was young. So I had good coordination with my feet too. So it really helped me uh, grow up even when I when I grew to six nine, six eight, it helped me to um, save my uh, footwork, save my speed. And um, I miss soccer a little bit, but uh, if I had a chance to like teach the guys or, or dribble it out, sometimes I'll do it. But I, I become I became better because I forgot how to play soccer. Like I didn't do it for so long, but it's coming back to me. <laughs> Come on, man. Don't ask that. <laughs> That, that he's Brazilian, it doesn't mean like he's better than me, man. We got we got good players in Israel too, you know. <laughs> no, he's he's solid. I never seen him though. Like you know, like he never really he never really juggles the ball like that. Yeah. In terms of applying it to football skills, though, like where does the, where do you feel like the footwork really helps? Is it like moving in tight spaces or changing direction? Or? Um, I can say changing direction um change of direction maybe um yeah tight spaces um you don't really like i i don't really see an obvious spot it's just like all in general you feel like i feel really light in my legs so thank you christos hey denny how are you how you doing i'm fine thank you very much denny what are your priorities and what do you expect uh, to see from your team in the second half of the season? Um, just the effort. I mean, we're 24 games left. Just the effort. Uh, staying together no matter if we lose. We're going to lose some games, obviously. Um, just stay together. Uh, stay connected. Keep sharing the ball. Uh, keep keep our focus. Keep our energy. And uh, that, that's the money time right now. So just... Um, we're going for it, you know. And do you prove it both in Europe and uh, during your uh, your uh, your stress in the in uh, Washington Wizards that you don't afraid to take responsibilities to make a step up. How how important for you is to make a step up in the second half of the season and play alongside Rui, alongside KP? How how you vision that? I, I think it's big. I think we all together need to need to step up. Everybody. I mean, we got we got our our. Our best player out with 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 Bradley and everybody need to take more responsibility. I need to step it up. Everybody got to step it up. I mean, uh, we're short, so we just need to play hard. Everybody know uh, needs to know his role and just just play. In the end of the day, it's basketball. You don't really need to overthink it. I think everybody out here are uh, great players. We just know we just need to keep play together. <laughs> 